Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I suppose if you need a, a title for the message, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And whether you've known Christ for years or maybe you've just met him, I can tell you that one thing is always true. He will not rest until you let him fully into your heart. He wants every area of your heart. He wants your whole heart. He wants your focus. He wants your attention. Give it to him. Give it to him. And you'll be amazed at what he'll do with your life. You will be amazed at what he'll do. <coughs> Teenagers, God loves you. Mom and Dad love you. Pappy and Grandma love you. Uncle and Aunt love you. And they know you'll make choices and decisions that God's not happy with. And you'll make mistakes in life. You'll make wrong choices. But you know that? God still loves you. And so do they. As your parents will always love you, God always loves you. And he's watching over you. His angels are been put, put in charge of you. Do you know that? You all have angels? <coughs> we have angels. <coughs> Lord said, I beheld their angels. There's angels around us. Hebrews chapter 13 says, you're to be given the hospitality of all people as Christians. You should certainly be hospitable. <clears throat> For Hebrews says, some have entertained angels unawares. Be given to hospitalities. Be good to strangers. <coughs> Because you might be entertaining an angel on the earth. The artist of the picture I described for you, his name is Warner Salman, S-A-L-L-M-A-N. And the title of his picture is Christ at Heart's Door. I wasn't aware it had a title. I usually just saw the picture, but it's Christ at Heart's Door. And if you'll notice the picture of the door, there's no knob or handle on the door. Did you ever notice that? There's no knob, there's no handle. You see, that door can be closed from the inside. And it can only be opened from the inside. And that's why he's knocking at the heart's door. Because you've got to open it. He doesn't force himself into your life. He wants you to open your heart to him. His hand is raised in his knocking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and tea with me. This particular passage, God spoke to the first century church of Laodicea. And the Lord was calling his people back to himself. They had grown distant from him. He was no longer part of their life. They became full of wealth and material possessions. They no longer had saw their need for anything. And God saw that they were naked. And they were in need of so many things. But they saw their need. They didn't see their need for anything and not even for Jesus. Now that congregation is long gone. But I can tell you that our Lord's words are still relevant for the churches today. And what is true of the churches is also true of our individual lives. They were drifting from the Lord. Sometimes we drift from the Lord. I can tell you that drifting usually takes place in teenage years. That was a drifting that took place in my life and was drifting. I don't know why it is that when we're teenagers we think that we have better ideas than our parents did. Our parents just smile because they know that they probably thought about the same things. Parents smile a lot because they know their children will 
probably be a whole much a whole lot like them. <laughs> Whenever they do something bad, the parents will usually say, "Well, who do they take after? You, <laughs> you. They take after. They get that from you. I still have all my problems. They just get it from her. I still have all my." But God still loves us so much. He lets us make those choices and decisions that are wrong. He knows they're wrong. But he just waits. And you know what? When you learn that way, we'll have learned. There are parents, and not every one of us are all the same. We want our children to not have to go through that. We know what it was like to go through that, to experience that. And there was pain and suffering because we knew that we had made the wrong choice and yet our children are destined to seem to make the same choices. And so our hearts are pulled and burdened because we know what is ahead for them. And yet it seems inevitable. It just still seems like they still want to be an adult and they want to make their own choice and so as parents we give them the space to do it our father in heaven gives us lots of space to do it as well because you see he created us to be free moral agents we could choose as we wish he could have made us to serve him it wasn't his wish and so he gave us choices that we could make hoping we would choose him. So as you evaluate your relationship with the Lord today, I want to show you a few things here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. If you have it there in front of you. The first thing we see is Jesus is standing. He is the one who takes the initiative to establish a relationship with us. And I can show you that wherever you want to go in the Bible. The Lord always takes the initiative. When Adam and Eve sinned and hid themselves in the garden, it was God who went after them and tried to find them where they were. Where art thou? It was he who took the initiative. Where art thou? Where are you at? It was God looking for man. Man wasn't looking for God. God was looking for man. God always takes the initiative. You can find it and see it everywhere in the scripture. Book of Genesis is full of places where God came. Took the initiative. The earth was filled with violence. And so the Lord talked to Noah and said, Noah, you need to build an ark. The ark was certainly big enough he could have taken more than eight souls. But only Noah and his own family were able to be saved. There was more room for more people. But the Bible says when God closed the door, that was it. He closed the door. Noah didn't. God did. He closed the door on mankind. They no longer after that had, had a chance. After that, there was no more choice but the flood. God called Abraham to establish his nation of Israel. Through Abraham, he called Abraham. After Noah, I'm just getting ahead a little bit. After Noah, the earth was replenished. God wanted the people to scatter. They didn't. The Bible says they were, chapter 11 of Genesis, they were of one language. And so they got together and decided they'd build a tower. You know what it said in the scripture? They wanted to build a tower that would reach to heaven. Couldn't preach on that message. But the Bible says God came down to see what they were doing. So you know they didn't get very far. He had to come down. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. They were going to build it to reach heaven, but God had to come down to see what they were doing. Again, the point is that God had the initiative. God took the initiative. He still takes the initiative. In the book of Romans chapter 3 and 11, it says there's none that seeks God. Before you were saved, the Lord was standing outside the door of your heart and he was knocking. And when you received him as your Savior, you were responding to his voice. It isn't a choice 
that you made on your own because no one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him. John chapter 6 and verse 44. We receive the gift of salvation and our Lord continues to take the initiative. He does so no matter how far we drift from Him. He's always seeking to restore our relationship. He wants to do more than just save us. He desires to come into our hearts and to fill us with His Spirit because He has wonderful plans for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you were gifted with very special gifts. And He has a plan for your gifts. Are your hearts ready to be filled with God's wonderful goodness? Or is your heart filled with world's treasures and pleasures? And He is left standing outside. 